Okay, this is just a test to see what happens with editing. <clears throat> Say, for example, that I made a mistake and I wanted to go back and edit it. Okay, I edited out that portion. Now I just want to see what it sounds like. Okay, hey guys. Um, so in this video, we're going to get started um, getting into a little bit more depth, uh, talking about some of the stuff that comes up in Chapter 3 now that we have discussed... Um, neurons and how they communicate and talked about action potentials and neurotransmitters and um, uh, neural circuits which are basically just um, you know neurons that are wired together and um, talked about sort of you know things having to do with convergence and stuff and how the um, whether or not a particular neuron becomes active whether it generates an action potential really depends on um, the total amount of input that it's receiving from all of the neurons that are sending signals its way. Um, uh, it depends on the total number and the balance between the amount of um, excitatory input as well as inhibitory input, and that'll be something that'll be um, important for something that we talk about in this chapter. So, um, this chapter deals with what's called neural processing um, and perception. We're sort of at this point moving a little bit away from. Um, well, sort of getting away from talking about uh, visual perception at the level of the retina, and we'll be, um, you know, moving forward from here um, somewhat. Um, that we do still have some things left to say about the the retina and some of the phenomena that it produces. So, um, you know, but we will be getting into talking about what happens. Um, in terms of visual perception as signals travel out the back of the eye from um, the ganglion, the axons of the ganglion cells which together form the optic nerve leading back to the back of the brain we'll talk about, we've already sort of mentioned that one of the first places that um, visual information goes is to the um, lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus, the LGN, um, and from there to um, the occipital lobe in the back of the head, which is the location of um, primary visual processing area. So we'll get into sort of talking a little bit about that. But before we do that, um, talk about um, another illusion and what it demonstrates about the workings of the visual system, and in particular. Um, this is something having to do with the uh, the organization of the um, the uh, the retina. Okay, so if you remember from um, one of the previous videos, we talked about how uh, signals travel through the retina, not just in sort of um, a vertical sort of direction, going from um, receptor to ganglion cell. But they also travel, signals also travel horizontally um, between receptors and between um, other cells that are between receptors and ganglion cells, such as bipolar cells. And the fact that the um, retina is organized in this way, with signals traveling both vertically and horizontally, leads to some interesting illusions, um, one of which um, I sort of previewed in, in one of my last videos called the Herman Grid. We'll take a look at that in a second. And um, the illusions like the, the Herman Grid have to do or seem to possibly be due to something that's called lateral inhibition, which was really sort of first discovered in experiments that were conducted on the eye of the limulus. The limulus is, in fact, a horseshoe crab. And um, the reason that researchers were sort of like to do research with um, something like a horseshoe crab to understand the way the visual system works in humans is because basically it's just easier. Um, the eye of the limulus is made up of lots and lots of what are called autumn, um, uh, matidia, which are basically just like uh, the horseshoe crabs version of rods and cones, but they're big enough that it's easy for researchers to record from a single receptor. It's easy enough for them to sort of get a uh, um, an electrode into exactly one of these. And they found some interesting things. Um, let me just go on to a picture. Here's a picture of a um, horseshoe crab. You can sort of see his lateral eye over here. Um, 
what they found was so each of these blue things here depicts um, a photoreceptor in the eye of um, the limulus, the horseshoe crab. And what they found, and down here, as we've seen these pictures before, this is showing the activity of a particular cell, a particular um, cell that they're recording from, that the researchers are recording from. So imagine, for example, they are recording from um, cell A here. So they have a little electrode that is um, stuck into this photoreceptor so that they're able to record the activity of this single cell as they stimulate it with light. So what they found was that when you stimulate just this single photoreceptor, not surprisingly, given what we talked about in a previous video, the cell um, generates many more action potentials. So the rate of firing increases, right? So this is pretty rapid firing. If you remember, each one of these little hash marks indicates that an action potential has occurred. So shining a spot of light onto just a single photoreceptor, onto A only, increases firing rate, firing rate and increases the rate at which that cell generates action potentials. But what they found that is, so we knew that already, what they found that was interesting was that if you don't just stimulate receptor A, but if you stimulate both A and um, B, for example, so this might be B right here, they noticed an interesting effect on the firing rate of A. So notice that this um, is just showing the activity of cell A. So here, when you stimulate A alone, um, A generates lots and lots of action potentials. It increases its rate of firing. But if you stimulated A plus B, and they're still recording from A, a actually slowed down. It generated fewer action potentials over the course of this period of time. And somewhat more surprisingly, if they left A alone, so they're still stimulating it at sort of the same intensity, so they're still sort of spot shining the same um, spot of light onto A, but they increased the intensity of the light that was being shined onto B, a slowed down even further, it generated even fewer action potentials. So it was as though A was sort of shutting off the more you stimulate B. Okay? And the reason for that has to do with the phenomenon that's called lateral inhibition. So what lateral inhibition is, is, um, well, it literally means inhibition coming from the lateral, right? Lateral means sides, so inhibition coming from the sides. So inhib inhibitory signals travel through, at least in the eye of the limulus, through this um, set of fibers here called the lateral plexus. And so they're sort of um, carrying signals in sort of a horizontal way, just like in the, in the retina, uh, the human retina. So what's happening? So we are stimulating A here with light of a certain intensity. And when you stimulate A alone, that causes um, A to generate lots of action potentials, right? Increase its firing rate. But if we stimulate B, why is A slowing down? Why is A shutting off? Because of lateral inhibition. Because the more you stimulate B, the more Inhibit inhibition travels laterally from the sides via the lateral plexus here. So inhibitory signals are being transmitted. Some, um, with the more you stimulate B, the stronger these inhibitory signals are going to be traveling um, horizontally here over to A, right? So that is why when you stimulate B, um, some portion of, of that stimulation of B is being translated into inhibitory signals that travel over here horizontally and right get added to A, right? And what did we say about the activity of a cell? The activity of a cell is always the sum total of all of the inputs to that cell. So adding inhibitory signals to cell A takes away from some of the excitatory messages. And so that's why 
A slows down when you, when you stimulate B. And as you increase the intensity of the stimulation to B, you're increasing the amount of the lateral inhibition traveling over here to A. And so you're even further decreasing the activity of cell A. So this is lateral inhibition. And this is um, important because this phenomenon isn't isolated just to um, the horseshoe crab. Otherwise, we really kind of wouldn't care too much about it if that were the case. Um, it exists in humans as well, and it actually explains some interesting phenomenon, some interesting illusions. This is one that I showed um, in a previous video. It's called the Herman grid, where the illusion here um, occurs precisely because of the organization of the human retina. So what you should see here is, um, and you should only see this in your periphery, is little gray blobs at the intersections of each of these white lines. And the moment you try to fixate on each, each of these um, little gray blobs, they disappear. Right? So if you're fixated down here, you see them in the other three corners around this center um, black, black square. So you would see them here, here, and here. But the moment you try to fixate on them, they disappear. Um, so this is completely an illusion. Um, no gray blobs actually there. And what explains um, the Herman grid is lateral inhibition in the human eye. Um, and I'm not going to have time to get to it in this video, so I'm going to stop this video here, and we're going to pick up in the next video um, with an explanation of how lateral inhibition explains this, um, this illusion, how it explains the Herman grid. So see you in a, uh, in a bit in the next video.